Hanga Ya Saidi is a cave site located on the upland coast of Kenya. In 2017, a group of archaeologists led by the National Museums of Kenya and the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History in Yenna found a pit three meters below the current surface of the cave containing a concentration of fragile and degraded bones in association with some stone artifacts. Given the brittleness and highly decomposed state of the remains, excavators decided to stabilize and plaster the sediment block containing the bones for further and specialized work at the lab. This was the beginning of an extraordinary discovery. With their extreme care and delicacy, researchers were rescuing for posterity one of the earliest and most remarkable findings of what makes us human, the treatment of the dead. The consolidated block, together with several loose bony fragments, was first transported to the National Museums of Kenya for initial excavation. Careful examination revealed what looked like the articulated spine of an immature individual. Two teeth visible on the surface of the block suggested that the remains could belong to a human. The sediment block was then moved to the National Research Center on Human Evolution, Thenye, in Burgos, Spain so the physical excavation of the delicate remains could continue with the aid of imaging techniques. The use of microtomography, a high-resolution X-ray-based technique, revealed that the block contained additional teeth and other anatomical structures that were difficult to visualize owing to their very low density and powdery consistency. It was then decided to continue the investigation by combining classic manual excavation and the sequential scanning of smaller blocks to ease the virtual identification of elements that could not be physically extracted due to their delicate preservation. The surprise started to unveil. The block was encasing the partial skeleton of a child, about three years old, articulated and in a lateral and flexed position. The morphology of the teeth and skull confirmed that the remains belonged to our own species, Homo sapiens. Given the mechanical instability of the block, Researchers decided to separate two main units. One contained the base of the skull, neck and mandible. The other one included the articulated spine with associated ribs, a clavicle and several fragments belonging to the cranial, facial and pelvic area in a delicate state of preservation. As the cleaning of the first piece progressed, scientists started to uncover the skull of a child. With the intact articulation of the left side of the mandible, and some immature teeth with unformed roots that were astonishingly held in place. The study of the dentition confirmed that the child, which was nicknamed Umtoto, as it means the kid in Swahili, died at the age of two and a half years or three. All bones were still articulated or minimally displaced. These small movements could be explained by the process of disarticulation that takes place as a body decomposes and the organic tissues, muscles, and tendons disappear. The spine was in strict articulation, with the ribs and with the left arm and scapula in place, indicating that the body had been found in the place where it was originally deposited, and rapidly covered by soil, which protected it from alteration or disturbance. Even though the mechanical pressure of the sediment flattened the thorax, the rib cage had not collapsed. It preserved the original spatial relationship and curvature of the ribs. This means that the progressive destruction of the soft tissues and viscera did not produce large empty spaces. Instead, these were progressively filled with the surrounding soil. This phenomenon is typical of burials in the bare earth and with soils of fluid consistency as was later confirmed by the laboratory analysis of the sediment composition. Several mollusk shells were found close to the body, but it was not possible to determine if they had been placed there intentionally. The presence of some gastropods could be related with the decomposition process, 
as part of the so-called necrophagous fauna that is attracted by the corpse, reinforcing the idea of in situ decomposition in the pit. The right clavicle and the first and second rib were rotated about 90 degrees, as is typical of a tight burial, consistent with the upper part of the body of Umtoto being wrapped in a perishable cloth or material such as leather or leaves, like a shroud, or the body being densely packed within the pit. The head was rotated and the first three cervical vertebrae were attached to the base of the skull. This type of cranial dislocation is typical of burials where the head was resting on a pillow or headrest of perishable material. When this pillow decomposes, it creates a space below the head. Because of gravity, the skull tilts and disarticulates with the two or three first vertebrae as a unit. The possibility of a pillow and a shroud supports the idea that there was an elaborate involvement of the community in the funerary rite. The association of Umtoto's body with a type of stone tools known as Middle Stone Age lithics solves the question of which hominin was the maker of this type of industry. The geochemical analysis of the soil and the microscopic study of the bones provided additional signs of putrefaction and decomposition of the body in situ in the pit where it was found. The soil used to cover the body was different from the soil of the layer where the grave was dug, supporting the hypothesis of the deliberate excavation of the pit, the careful deposition of the body in a lateral and flexed position in the cavity, and the subsequent filling of the pit with soil. The burial was dated by means of luminescence to 78,000 years, which makes it the earliest human burial known in Africa. The scarcity of early burials in Africa despite this continent being considered the cradle of humankind, makes Panga Yasaidi an even more exceptional finding. This scarcity contrasts with the earlier and more abundant interments of modern humans and Neanderthals in West Asia. The Panga Yasaidi discovery opens questions about the origin and evolution of mortuary practices, a behavior documented in two species that were biologically and culturally very close, Homo sapiens, and Homo neanderthalensis. Thanks to Umtoto, we now know that 78,000 years ago, there was a community who cared about the loss of a child and wanted to give him a last farewell. <laughs>